Please die, please die. Please die. Please die. Ah! Oh! <laughs> oh, I think he died. <laughs>All right, so you just saw me run over this section of track here, and here are some close-up pictures of what actually happened, and you can see that it is not good. Look at this. Ooh. Ah. Gosh, that looks painful. Yeah, there's. it's just bad, okay? Anyway, um, what we're going to do now is do what all good engineers do. We had a problem. Let's come up with a solution, try to figure out what was going on in the process of this and find out how to remedy this all right so my first uh inkling is we have this banked too far but at the same time we weren't running fast enough through the course to properly use the track so we probably want to have the track uh less banked because it just it just seems so fast uh, but also this transition um can pose some problems. So we're going to take a closer look at certain things that we can do here to make this better. All right, so let's dive in and find out why our track flew apart on this and uh, find out how to fix that. All right, so we're going to actually find that there are two things going on and it's critical to understand. Uh, so the first thing is, is our bank angle is does not account for the transition from the flat track that was there to the 49 degree angle that the track is at. All right, we did this rough, uh, in roughly a six to seven foot span, and we did not account for how that's gonna happen uh, at low speed or high speed. All right, so between that, um, the flat track and the 49 degree angle, I have no sideways lateral forces because I'm not curving the track at this point. It is a straight piece of track that actually swings down from zero degrees to 49 degrees. And so there's no lateral forces. And I did not include that in my calculations and uh, now I know I should have. All right, so what happened was um, on the flat track, um, our track calculator actually calculates our center of gravity at the center between the two rails. So here are the two rails. There's where it thinks the center of gravity is. That's not right. I'm sitting above the track and it's about 18 and a half inches from our solid model. So we've got to move that up 18 and a half inches. And then I also said, hey, if I'm banking that way, I'm probably leaning that way too. So I said, okay, let's move it two inches over. And that makes a big difference in uh, how, we th how we think about this thing. So the track calculator considers everything just to be a, a point mass on the center of the rails. When in actuality, you're really not that, uh, you're, you know, you're huh, uh, just about 19 inches off of that dimension. So what happens is, is as I go to 49 degrees, uh, I've now got my center of gravity about eight and a half inches out past this rail, which means I'm gonna be pushing down this way um, and pulling up here. Uh, so I call this the force lower and the force upper, uh, and I just wanted to do a, a force upper so I could say that FU was one, one of my uh, variables, which I thought was hilarious. Uh, so that's uh, what we're doing. So we actually have you know our 310 pounds coming down here, uh, which would be here, but since the roller is this way, we got to multiply that by 310 pounds. So it's already got about a 1.3... Uh, uh, addition, and then we have to divide that by 0 0.707 to go from uh, roughly uh, 49 degrees to there. So uh, the result is up at the top, uh, force FU is about 180 pounds, uh, which is, you know, less than our 1G. It's about two thirds of the 1G case, but there's something else at play. All right. And that something else is actually uh, rotational inertia. And what happens is, is we're starting off flat in going into the section. As you go through it, six feet, you're actually rotating down. All right. Well, that's a free falling weight of sorts. Um, it's falling at roughly half the speed of gravity. 
as this end stays the same, but this end falls and it is bouncing down. All right, I'm going through it and all of a sudden I have all this momentum, I have velocity uh, change in this and all of a sudden it has to stop because I don't change my angle anymore. So that creates a, uh, a hammer type effect on the tracks and it's not as big of a deal pushing down because I've built the track to uh, accommodate that. But uh, for every action, there's an equal op and opposite reaction. So as I'm pushing down harder here uh, and it can take it, you know, up to three G's, this one really isn't built for that. The Black Widow is just not built for upward loads. Uh, it's built for downward loads, except for the two spots where I have the negative G hills, where I actually did go ahead and beef up those areas a little bit so that as uh, they go upward, it's not uh, relying entirely on the screws. And I may want to actually go back after this and reinforce those two areas. What we're seeing is, you know, tremendous upward force. I split a couple ties. So I believe I split three of the small ties right where the transition is, where it's making that rapid change. And then one of them was uh, a little bit further down, I think right at the first uh, support as you go into the curve. Uh, so they're all within the same uh, general span. So moving forward, what we're gonna do is we're gonna ease our transition. We're gonna make it longer. Uh, we're first of all going to uh, limit the bank angle into the turn. What we don't want is an upward force for FU. Right now it's a negative 180 pounds. The track is being pulled up and we want to limit that at zero pounds. All right. And the way we do that is simple geometry. We're not, we don't have to calculate really anything. Uh, we just want to make sure that whatever angle this is at, this doesn't get further than this. So we're going to assume it's still 18 and a half inches and two inches over. And basically what we're going to do is draw a line here and then a perpendicular line here. And then we measure that. And that just happens to be 24 degrees. So we are going to set this at 24 degrees for the transition. Start off at zero and 24. Uh, and at that point we start entering the curve which gives us uh, a balancing side load here. And at that point, we can actually uh, get this to closer to 49, but I don't want to go there, go quite there again. All right, we want to be a little bit less than that, and I'll explain just that in just a second. So um, we're, we're assuming, you know, if it's a linear rate, uh, the first six feet will be going to 24 degrees, and they'll say the next six feet will be going to uh, 50 degrees or 49 degrees. So we roughly doubled our length of that transition. Okay. Now we're not actually going to go to 49. We're probably going to go to about 44 um, or less, uh, 42, 44, somewhere in there. This isn't an exact science, so we don't have to be uh, particularly, you know, spot on with our numbers here. Uh, the reason we want to do that is uh, something called walking. And I noticed this and then I picked up on some research that Paul Gregg had done on walking. And walking is when the, it's usually done in a straight uh, section, when the wheels uh, on the bogies are trying to find their home and they keep bouncing back and forth to each side. One of the things he suggested was that we actually have a, uh, the banks, less so that we are f intentionally forcing the wheels, uh, the side wheels to one side. And that actually makes the, the, the bogey find its home a little bit better because there's some forces there that it actually has to deal with. And unbanking a turn is actually, you know, the best way to do that. Um, so that, that is what we're, our plan is to uh, redo this whole section. And while we're redoing that, we're going to actually make uh, some changes. Uh, we're going to change where the uh, people get on and off uh, so that it, the train actually makes it all the way back to the station. So that is what happened there and we're going to correct those things and try again soon. Please die, please die. Please die. Please die. Ah! Oh! <laughs> oh, I think he died. <laughs>
Hey, we appreciate you watching this video. Uh, if you want to know more about building your own roller coaster, please go to www.mentorengineer.com slash roller coaster.